Good morning. This is the last Sunday after Epiphany, Transfiguration Sunday. Can you believe it? On Wednesday, we'll be Ash Wednesday, and we'll send you out a service for that. And we pray that you'll be with us. And then we are launched into Lent. And I've come into the church today. Um, and I tell you, when I open the doors, you know that glorious church smell of the church, 145 years old, the prayers and just the sacred sense of it and, and smell of it. It's just beautiful. It's good to be back in here. So let us begin, shall we? I'm going to start with our opening sentence. And it goes, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. It's Matthew 17, 5. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and strength. Oh come, let us worship. The first reading is from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Elijah ascends to heaven. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Geth Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. And as they both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I'm taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen, but when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. The psalm for today is Psalm 50, verses 1 to 6. The Acceptable Sacrifice, a psalm of Asaph. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declared his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Selah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it is in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen.
The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed and his clothes became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking to Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Rabbi, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't really know what else to say, for they were all terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus with them. As they went back down the mountain, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. I like to imagine myself on a mountaintop with Jesus, to learn from him, to be forgiven, healed, and strengthened for the next steps of my journey. This account of the transfiguration, which we find recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and it occurred toward the end of our Lord's earthly ministry, was very important. Peter has recognized him as the Messiah. Jesus has been trying to explain that he's going to be abused and beaten and will die on the cross. This is beyond the disciples' understanding. As we have seen in the previous chapter, when Peter took him to one side and told him that this must not happen, Jesus reprimanded Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are seeing things from a human point of view. This trip up the mountain occurred about one week later. We have read in the scriptures that our Lord never did anything without talking to his father. The time was coming for him to set out for Jerusalem and face the betrayal and death on the cross. He needed to be apart and to be quiet, to hear God's voice. In Luke's gospel, we're told that Jesus was talking to Moses and Elijah about his departure. The Greek word used was exodus, the same as the English word exodus, the word used for the departure of the children of Israel into the desert the most adventurous journey in human history. The whole people put their trust in God and entered into the unknown. This is exactly what Jesus was about to do, setting out on a journey to Jerusalem, beset with perils to face the cross. He needed to hear from his father, God, that this was what he must do. The time had come near. This for our Lord was truly a mountaintop experience, talking to Moses and Elijah. We don't know what was said. We can only imagine the encouragement he received to continue on. Then he heard his father's voice again, similar to when he was baptized, saying, this is my dearly loved son. This time the words were followed by listen to him. I wonder if God's words listened to him were directed to Peter, who'd been arguing with Jesus saying, no, this must not happen. Let's think about Peter, James and John. What were they experiencing and how did it affect them? 
I wonder if they were thinking about previous mountaintop experiences. Mountains figure a lot in scripture, don't they? People in the Old Testament times often thought they were closer to God on the mountaintop. Jesus did a lot of teaching on the mountain. There's the famous Sermon on the Mount, often called the Ordination Sermon. That was when he taught the disciples that he had just chosen what ministry with him would be like. The servant ministry that was so far into all they had been taught before. Another significant mountaintop occurrence was when Moses received the Ten Commandments. That account has some similarities to this one. Remember that Moses' face was brilliant white. When he came down the mountain, he wore a veil over his face to cover the brilliance. What do you think about Peter? What was he feeling? He'd recently been reprimanded by Jesus by those words, get behind me, Satan. Peter must have been devastated, but look what's happening now. He's been invited to go up the mountain for some quiet time. This showed how he was loved and forgiven. In John 13, before washing the disciples' feet at the Last Supper, John says that Jesus loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. Our Lord wanted to encourage Peter, wanted him to experience the glory of God and hear God's voice. Mark tells us, as he was praying, Jesus' face shone with the glory of God. His clothes became brilliant white. In Luke's account, we read that the disciples were heavy with sleep. But when they woke up, they saw his face shining. All the Gospels say that Peter didn't know what to say. So he said, let's make three dwellings, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. I don't know what you think, but I'm definitely with Peter and would like to stay experiencing God's glory. Then a cloud came upon the mountain. All through the Old Testament, the luminous cloud was a sign of the presence of God. It was normal to experience clouds on the mountain. They came and went with regularity, but this one was different. It became luminous. And then they all heard God's voice saying, he is my son who I love dearly. Listen to him. Luke says, when they woke up, they experienced the glory of God and heard God's voice. They had to wake up to hear. Do you hear God's voice? What keeps us asleep and spiritually deaf so that we can't hear God's voice? Are we too busy? Are we distracted by listening to the struggle for power of the politicians? Or is it sin that's hardened our hearts and closed our ears? Jesus wants us to be like Peter, go up the mountain and experience God's glory and hear his voice. It's no coincidence that this reading is assigned in our lectionary for the last Sunday before Lent. When we're called to observe a holy Lent, repent as John the Baptist preached, and meditate on Jesus' journey to the cross to die for us, to wipe away our sin and enable us to come into God's presence. As Lent approaches, let's take some quiet time apart to read our Bibles, experience the glory of God, rest in the light of his presence, and hear his voice saying to us, you are my beloved child. Amen. The Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. All men. And now for the prayers of the people. Let us stand before God and present our position presents our petitions. The word of God calls us to see that all the places and occasions of the world, even in places of sorrow and death, are transfigured by the presence of the glory of God in Christ Jesus. Let us now call to mind all who are in any need and commend them to God's transforming care, saying, O oh, merciful God, hear our prayer. For all those who are alone, for widows and widowers, for the divorced and the separated, and for orphans. O oh, merciful God, hear our prayer. For the imprisoned, for those whose only home is the streets, and for those caught by addiction. O oh, merciful God, hear our prayer. For the hungry, for those who cannot feed their children, and for the unemployed. O oh, merciful God, hear our prayer. For refugees, for the victims of warfare and for those held in poverty by racial discrimination. O oh, merciful God, hear our prayer. For the people of our nation, of our city and our community. O oh, merciful God, hear our prayer. For artists and writers and for all who think on the edge of society. O oh, merciful God, hear our prayer for teachers and preachers of the light-bearing word of Christ. O oh, merciful God, hear our prayer. And for now, for all of you listening and watching to this service, who are feeding on the word of Christ, <clears throat> O oh, merciful God, we ask you to hear our prayer. And for all those, let us just take a minute and just think about anyone personally known to you who you would like to pray for. O oh, merciful, oh, merciful God, please hear our prayer. So with Moses and Elijah and all the people of God, with the church throughout the ages, bearing witness to the great light of God shining in dark places, we commend to you all for whom we pray. O oh, merciful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our confession and absolution. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, and he welcomes us sinners, and he invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God, Lord God grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our collect for today is, Almighty God, on the Holy Mount, you revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world and change us into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Almighty God, whose loving hand hath given us all that we possess, grant us grace that we may honor thee with our substance, with all you've given us, and remembering the account which we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we want to thank everyone for your generosity and sending in your offerings to the church. Let us lift those offerings of your heart before God. Holy God, receive all we offer you this day and bring us to that radiant glory which we see which we see in the transfigured face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now for the, the Lord's Prayer. As our Savior Christ, Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And a prayer for guidance in these days. Creator of the universe, the light of your glory shines in the darkness of our lives. Make us attentive to your presence, prompt to serve you, and ever eager to follow in the steps of the one who is our true light, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness working in us that which pleases him through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let our prayers be set forth in your sight, O Lord God, as incense. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Um, be safe and stay well. And remember, if you need anything at all, from your church that we are able to help you with, please do not hesitate to call. Especially if you're looking for prayer support, call us. We're here. God's love. Amen. <laughs>